learning power pivot and DAX can feel overwhelmed. And most people fail because they skip over the fundamental. They dive straight into writing complex formula, creating dozens of extra helper columns to the point of, well, breaking Excel. Trust me, I've been there, and I'm here to tell you what really works, even when you're dealing with big data. Follow me, and by the end of this video, you will not only save yourself from frustration, but also unlock the technique that will make your data analysis faster, smarter, and much more efficient. Hi, my name is Lin, and I'm a senior data analyst with years of experience turning chaos data into clear insights. And welcome to my channel, where I share my passion with data. If you're ready to take your analysis skills to the next level, then you're in the right place. This video is part of my data analytic roadmap series where we help Excel Bobati, a growing change of Bobati, make sense of their messy timesheet data. In the previous video, we've set clear objective for the analysis. We also took the first step with Power Pivot, seeing firsthand how powerful it is for extracting insight from raw data. If you missed that video, I highly recommend to go back and start from the beginning because today we're building on that foundation to take your skill even further. Back to today's video, we'll start by familiar ourselves with the real Power Pivot user interface. Then I'll walk you through the two critical concepts of DAX, calculated measure and calculated column. We'll explore the difference between them and when to use each. And finally, I'll introduce you to a very powerful set of DAX formula, Iterator X, which will give you much more flexibility in your calculation. Now, before we start the session, you can download the data file using the link in the description. And since each video is built up from the last, make sure you watch the previous one to get the most out of today's session. And there's also a timeline that helps you to navigate through all the sections of the videos Please feel free to pause, rewind the video if you need to follow along as your own space. If you find this video helpful, please smash the like button at any time and subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any of my future data analytic episodes. Ready to take full control of your data? Let's dive into it! So far, with just breaking the ice, we only use pivot table interface in Excel to calculate our explicit measure. But there are more to power pivot than just this standard Excel's pivot table interface. Now, let's level up our DAX skill and let me introduce you to the real user interface of power pivot data model. So go to data, click on data model and manage data model. This is the user interface of Power Pivot. As you can see, it's very similar to Excel's user interface. You have all the tab on the top, and on each tab you have the ribbon, and all the functions that you can use, ranging from connect to data sources, formatting data, sorting data, and some calculations. Those are basic options. And you also have some more advanced options like data modeling, which we will explore these features in the future's videos. Below is the field list where you can see all different tables that stored in the data model. And within each table, you can see the column attached to those tables. You can change the format of the column if you want. The data in the data model is compressed and stored in memory. The technology known as Veripack, which enables storage of large data, more than a million rows, while ensuring fast DAX calculation and analysis. And this is how Excel Legacy becomes Power Excel with the help of Power Query to transform data and Power Pivot to analyze data. Both features allow Excel to handle more than millions of rows of data. So far, we only write DAX formula in Excel's interface. 
but that is not the only place you can write DAX. You can also write DAX measure in this power of pivot data model interface as well. And there are two ways you can write DAX. The first one is calculated measure, which allow you to flexibly aggregate data into a single value by performing calculations like some average or counts. We've already written some of these calculated measures in Excel's interface in the previous videos. Now, in this Power Pivot interface, you can write DAX calculated measure by going to Home, click on Calculation area to activate the calculation area right here. You can write DAX formula in any cell within this calculation area. So for example, you can see here that we have some existing measure that we previously created in the Excel interface. They are all stored here. You can expand the column to see the full view of the measure. You can see the name of the measure and the final aggregation value. Now, if you click on the calculated measure, you can see that the DAX formula bar is activated. You can expand the formula bar to have more space to write your DAX formula, just like in the formula bar in the Excel user interface. If you write calculated measure in this data model view, the syntax is a little different. It would be the name of the measure, followed by a column equal, and followed by the DAX formula which you use to calculate your measure. Now, the second way you can write DAX is calculated column, meaning that the DAX measure will lift in a column of the table in the data model. Think of it as an extra column you created to the table using formula, just like to create a new column in an Excel table. All right, so let's try to do this. Let's say I want to calculate the age of each employee. So what I would need to do is to double click on the add column. I'll name the column as age. Once I hit enter, there's a calculated column created and the column is highlighted in black, as you can see here. And also the formula bar is activated. Now I can write my DAX calculated formula. And as you notice, I've already specified the name here, so I don't need the semicolon equal. I only need to write my formula right here. Now there are many ways to calculate the age using the birthday columns, but I'm going to use the year fract function to calculate the difference between today's day and the birthday from the employee table, close bracket, and hit enter. Make this column a bit bigger. And you can see that the age is calculated. Now I don't want the decimal, so I'm gonna just put it in the round down function. And I don't want any decimal, so the second argument will be zero. And hit enter. And we have the age column calculate it. Easy, right? Just like writing Excel's formula. Now, if I want to calculate the average age of all these employees, what should I do? So similar to Excel's, you can use the average function to average all the age in this column. And because average is an aggregated function, so we need a calculated measure. So in this calculation area here. I'm going to type in average A. You can see that the moment you type the formula in, it will shoot you up to the formula bar right here. Now, the next piece is column equal and average. And what do I want to average? Is the age column from the employees table, close bracket and hit enter. You can see that the average age of all the employees is 25 years. And I don't wonder decimal. So again, use round down and no decimal and hit enter. 
And we have our calculated measure, which you can use to drag and drop into the Excel Power Pivot interface, just like the other measure that we've created previously. Okay, now here you might wonder, so if I can do everything the same, like in Excel, why bother complicated things by adding the data into the data models, then writing DAX measure? What's the point of Power Pivot? Well, the difference is with Power Pivot, you don't even need to create a helper column, an extra calculated column right here, to be able to calculate the average age. You can use a DAX calculated measure to aggregate data directly from the original column. And why are we using DAX calculated measure instead of DAX calculated columns? Well, the simple answer is the size and the performance of the data model. When you add extra columns to the data model, the size of the data model increase as the Power Pivot engine need to store value of each row for these extra columns. Plus, every time there is changes in the data model, calculated column recalculated each row once again, and it's potentially impacting the performance of the entire model. For a small data set, it is okay to use calculated columns. But if you have a big data set, let's say more than 50 million of records, you should go for a calculated measure. Now that you understand the advantage of using calculated measure versus the calculated column, let's go back to our example and try to derive the average age without using a calculated helper column. So how do we do that? This is where the magic of DAX kick in. And let me introduce you to a new set of DAX formula, Iterator X. DAX Iterator X formula, like sum X or average X, is a special type of functions in DAX used for calculating values by iterating through each row of a table, meaning that it applies a calculation or an expression to each row of the table and then aggregated the calculated result all together to have a final aggregated result as a single value. Sound hard to digest, right? Let's go through an example. Let's create another measure, this time using only calculated measure. So in the calculation area here, type in the name of the measure. I'm going to call it average x h, followed by the column and equal. Now for the DAX formula, we will use DAX iterator function average x. The first argument is the source table you want to iterate, and that is the employees table. The second argument is the calculation that you want to apply. We want to average the H column. So select the H column, close bracket, and hit enter. We don't want the decimals, so I'm going to round that down. Round down, number of digits is zero. All right, so far so good. Now, we don't want our formula to go through the calculated column. We want it to derive directly from the birthday column. And we know that the H column is calculated using this formula. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and copy the formula that derived the H column and go back to my measure and replace this part with the formula. Hit enter. And I have my average H measure created. And as you can see, the result of both methods are the same. The only difference is with the X iterator, the calculated column H is created automatically at the back end of the engine. We do not need to create a physical calculated column, which will increase the size of the data model. 
Now, the question is, when do you use the X iterator? In simple words, when you cannot use the standard aggregation function like sum or average directly, and you need to create an extra column or even a table as an intermediary step, and then you use that intermediary result to aggregate to get to the final results. So to avoid creating all of those extra columns or even tables, we can simply use the X iterator to create the columns or table at the back end of the engine. All right, now that we have our average age measure created, let's go back to Excel and add that information to our pivot table. So simply close the pivot table window and we're right back in Excel. And as you can see here, we have the newly created calculated measure right here in the pivot field. And simply choose the pivot table you want to add the information in, drag and drop the measure to the value area, and we have our result displayed in the pivot table. Now, I do not want to see this measure store x5 and the average age, but I don't want to delete them completely from the data model. What do I do? Let's go back to the data model. Now, in the calculation area, right click on the measure and hide from client tool. I'll do the same for the average age. Right click and hide from client tool. Now, if I go back to Excel, I can see that the measure are gone from the pivot fields, even though they are still exist in the data model. Today, we explore the core concept of DAX, calculated measure and calculated column, and when it's best to use them. Plus, we got a hands-on experience with the powerful DAX function, Iterator X, which allow us to extract information directly from the original source without the need of creating helper columns. These DAX functions are essential for working with large datasets efficiently. They help you to simplify your analysis and make smarter decisions. But this is just the beginning of DAX journey. In the next videos, we will take it a step further by learning the fundamental of how DAX formulas operate. This is the critical concept that will lay the foundation for any advanced data analysis with DAX. Thank you for watching. If this video helped you to get a better grasp of DAX, make sure to give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who might be benefits. And don't forget to leave a feedback in the comment below and make sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my latest episodes. See you in the next video.